Hey guys, welcome back and good morning. It's about 11 a.m. We are kicking off another video. We are in the car right now heading to go take care of some errands today. So right now I'm on my way to Home Depot. Need to make some returns and then I need to go to two different grocery stores and then go to the dry cleaners. So we got a few things that we're tackling today. Right now the cleaners are at our house uh, taking care of business because our house was in deep need of some quality deep cleaning. So that's happening right now, feeling great about that. And yeah, as I was driving, I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and kick off the video. We're getting out and about. I feel like the last few videos have been a lot of at-home content. So I figured I would bring you guys along to, uh, you know, some outside adventures outside of the house, not outside, outside, but leaving the house adventures. So let's get this bad boy started. If you guys haven't already, don't forget, subscribe below, give video a big thumbs up and let's get going. All right, so I just got to Home Depot. I don't know if you can kind of see through the window there, but I just got here and need to make my return. So in the back seat, um, I have these two sump pumps, these like mega things of vinegar concentrate, big old things of baking soda, and some of those, um, like kind of like sandbags, but they are different. So they start flat, they absorb the water and then become a barrier once they've like inflated with water. And I had bought a bunch of that stuff when we thought that our house was going to be flooding and we didn't end up using either of the sump pumps. And then Darren's dad had brought down this really, really powerful one um, that was like double the strength of both of these. So he set that one up. So we still have that one at our house but the river has dropped down, I'd say at least 20 feet at this point. So like now it's kind of back to like normal level. So we are definitely not in any risk of flooding anytime soon. And majority of the storms are gone. I mean, today, beautiful blue skies, completely clear, not even a single cloud in, wow, really not a single cloud in sight, but <laughs> I digress. So back on topic, um, we don't need any of this stuff. We still do have all of the sandbags, like the actual sandbags and all of that stuff. So we have plenty of, flood supplies in case anything does actually happen but at this point we're we're out of the woods with that see what i mean about the sky though literally not a single cloud anywhere completely clear day feeling like a job well done so glad i remembered about that before we ran out of the um or we were out of the return window because i think we only had a couple more days it's already been like three weeks. So feeling good, off to the Indian store. Found everything that I need. I just need to get some rice and then off to Rayleigh's. This is literally the least amount of dry cleaning I have had in months. Usually I come in and it's like three loads, like overflowing, almost falling over. Like we're just, we're coming more often. All right, drop off is all done. Time to head to the grocery store. Does this happen to you guys where like, as soon as you get in your car, your GPS on your phone just like buzzes and is like, it will take, you know, like 23 minutes or six minutes or however long to get home and starts trying to like kickstart the GPS to get you home. Like first off, I know you know that I can't get anywhere, but like you don't need to remind me every time I get in a car. And also, why do I always think I'm going home? Like you think I have no life. There's no way I could possibly have somewhere else I need to go. Like they're trying to send me home <laughs> at every possible chance. Like give me a minute i got some other stuff i need to do believe it or not jeez i am sick and tired of my tire pressure just going down there's something clearly wrong with my tire but there is something seriously in my tire because the tire pressure leaks out every like two weeks i have to go 
refill it again. I really just need to go to like Jiffy Lube and they can fill in the hole. And yeah, I just really need to do that. I just always forget. And then every time I'm at the grocery store, I'm like, oh, I should probably just, you know, fill up the air. So at least it's not a safety issue, but probably ought to get that actually fixed soon. Hey guys, back home. It's been a little bit. The cleaners finished and left. So now I'm gonna start prepping part of our dinner. So tonight we are making a uh, paneer makhni. Um, basically, we're, it's like butter chicken, but instead of doing chicken, we're gonna do paneer. So paneer is like the vegetarian um, alternative to meat. It's kind of like, um, it tastes like a cross of tofu and some kind of like cheese curd, like a firm cheese. Um, so the brand that we always use is called Gopi and they do have a few different types of paneer um, based on like how firm you want it kind of like tofu so um, when you make a recipe like this whether it's butter chicken or you're using paneer you do need to marinate it so for the marinade um, I'm using one and a half cups of Greek yogurt um, you're supposed to use whole milk Greek yogurt. However, for the brand that I like, which is uh, Fage or Fage, this one, um, the only one that they had in stock at Rayleigh's was the 0% fat. So this is just the marinade, um, not necessarily the sauce. So I'm not too worried about it. I've actually had this exact issue before and it works just fine. So one and a half cups of Greek yogurt. Again, ideally full fat Greek yogurt and then two tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of gram masala, two tablespoons of ground cumin, and one and a half tablespoons of ground turmeric. The recipe does call for three pounds of meat. However, that ends up being a lot of meat. However, we are both sauce people, so we prefer less <laughs> less meat, more of the sauce. So what we do is we use two of these packages and each of these packages um, are each 14 ounces. So we end up with 28 ounces and that is sufficient. I mean, every in every scoop you have a lot of sauce and you do have pieces of paneer in every single one. So yeah, that hasn't been an issue for us. So that's the way that we prefer to do it. So when we're cutting it, usually I cut them into um, slices. So just from this, I just cut it this way and about this thick. So what is that, like a quarter inch? Yeah, I'd say it's about a quarter inch. And then I cut it in half and then in half again. So I end up with pieces like this. So that's how I cut them. But what I do like to do before I cut all of it, because then it like fills up my cutting board, I do like to pre-mix the marinade. And as far as the spices, if you guys want to um, make this yourself and you don't have like an Indian market near you, um, I actually have ordered it many a times just uh, from Amazon. So this is the gram masala. And majority of the, um, the spices that we have are that brand. But I have found that all of those seem to be pretty good quality. All of my recipes have turned out well and true to taste. Um, how like, you know, some of them you can tell that it's cheap. I haven't really experienced that um, with any of those brands. So I just finished cutting the paneer and I mixed it up. As you can see, there, there's not a whole lot of extra marinade. There's basically the perfect amount. However, I did realize that I was so busy chit-chatting with you guys that I forgot to add the two tablespoons of lemon juice. So I am going to add that now. And that also helps uh, thin out the mixture a bit. And it looks great. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and saran wrap this stick it in the fridge and we'll come back to it in a few hours. I am so scattered everywhere. So I, I'm just now doing the dishes from um, making that marinade. And I stopped, re-vacuumed the entire house. Mind you, the cleaners just left. However, I noticed there were a few things on the ground here, a few dog hairs over there, and I just decided to re-vacuum the entire house. And then I was like, you know what? I don't like how my spices are organized. I was trying to find a spot to put away um, some of the ones that I was using and I was like, I feel like I can never find anything. So then, 
So then I decided to go through all of my spices and all, we have three spice rocks um, around the kitchen. Again, why are they not together? We don't know. Someone who doesn't cook uh, designed this kitchen. Um, but I went through all three spice racks, went through the dates of all of them, and then the ones that were the same thing and around the same date, I combined all of them into the uh, expiration date that was the soonest, you know what I mean? So I didn't accidentally use some expired product. Um, did all of that, and then I proceeded to reorganize all of the spices, which actually I'm very happy about, but I keep taking on these random projects. Like then I was gonna go through um, all of our sauces. We have like a sauce cabinet and go through all the dates, which I do periodically every few months. I go through everything, check all the dates and I reorganize everything. And I was about to start doing that. And then I was like, I never even finished the dishes over here. So now I'm doing the dishes. I'm just everywhere. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Oh, and then I was like, Oh, the laundry should be done. Should I go move it up and go fold the laundry? No, let's finish one thing at a time. I feel like I'm in control of my life when my house is clean. So I'm like, how can I take this to the next level, you know? <sighs> oh my gosh, guys, I have done it again. Um, I went to put something away under my bathroom sink and I realized that it was really messy and it just everything piled on top of itself, like baskets on top of each other and just like, it was honestly filled almost to the top of the cabinet um, just because nothing was put in a, wasn't organized at all basically. So I went through everything, got rid of a bunch of stuff and I reorganized it. <laughs> and um, it looks great, I'll show you guys, but um, I'm out of control. Like I need to just, I need to stop. I have no chill today. Um, I just, I'm trying to reorganize my entire house. So in here I have all of my backup makeup I have some band-aids, my backup makeup wipes, um, brand new um, like eyeshadow palettes and stuff. In here, I have um, all of like my mouth stuff. So these are all like my whitening strips and travel um, toothpaste and toothbrushes and stuff. So it's just ready to go. And then all of my backup toothbrushes and toothpastes. And then these are just all of my travel minis. So it's just ready to take and go. And then of course, mouthwash back here. I have all of my backup shampoos, conditioners, face wash, body wash, dry shampoo, hairspray, um, perfume, face wash. I think I already said that. And then um, hair mask. And then back there, I have all like my um, like backup uh, deodorant, tampons, pads, all of that jazz. So I have everything just all organized and all of my little bins. And um, I mean, look how much spare space we have. Like this looks excellent. So we went from like, I couldn't even see like where the gold turns to like bronze. Um, yeah, it was filled all the way to there, just like mountains of things because it just wasn't organized well. So now, that looks great. And then I went into here. So this drawer is like my nail care drawer. So I went through all my nail polishes and I got rid of a bunch that, um, well actually I probably ought to get rid of this one too. You can kind of see how it's like separating. Um, mm, although this one's fair, I only got that one a few months ago. So actually that one should be fine. I think it's just separated. Um, but I have all of my different nail polishes for like French white tip, the little pen nail buffers, cuticle cutters, and nail cutter, acetone. These are the three um, nail files I'm using right now, but this box is um, a bunch of new nail files. So this is kind of just like my uh, nail care. And then unfortunately I couldn't really fit anywhere, um, fit my little cotton balls anywhere, so I just kind of set them on top. So I'm having a cleaning intervention with myself. Dad just got home. Playtime. It's playtime. What are you guys doing? Oh, are you excited for playtime? <laughs> okay, so Darren's home. Uh, he was out running errands and so obviously pups are very excited. So we are just getting started cooking dinner. So I am melting six ounces of butter in here and Darren is chopping some onion right now and then we are going to cook down the onion and then I'm uh, starting to cook some rice. This is the type of rice that we use. Once we cook the onions down until they're translucent, then we're going to be adding this. So this is two tablespoons of cumin seed and then about five or six cloves of garlic and three tablespoons of ginger. So for the ginger, I just use this. This way I use for the garlic and then cumin seed. So I also just added in about a tablespoon of canola oil and now I'm adding in the onions 
and I'm going to cook them until they are translucent. All right, time to add in the cumin seeds, ginger, and garlic. So now I'm just gonna mix these in. And this whole time I've been cooking on medium heat. So now I'm going to continue to cook this until the onions start to brown. I also forgot to mention that these are two medium yellow onions. So now our onions are nice and turning golden brown. So it's time to add in the next ingredients. So I have three Roma tomatoes diced up. And then I'm going to add in the peppers. We have three large jalapeno peppers and five small Thai peppers. If you like it really, really spicy, this is gonna give a solid kick. If you like it really, really spicy, you can add in like two more Thai peppers and two habanero peppers. Tastes really good. Habanero peppers add an excellent flavor along with the heat. So now I'm just going to mix all of this in. And then once I've finished mixing it together, I'm going to be adding in one cinnamon stick. And then we're gonna cook this all down for about 10 to 12 minutes. It's time for the next ingredient. We are adding in two thirds cups of chicken broth. So I'm using Swanson. I'm using just the regular one. Um, I imagine low sodium, usually recipes will call for low sodium. That way you can control the amount of salt in your dish. Um, we love salt, so we really don't care. For example, that butter at the beginning, you probably should have been using um, no salt butter. We use full salt uh, whenever we cook causes no issues for us. So we use full salt butter and full salt um, chicken broth, but you guys do with that what you like. So now that I've added that in, mixing it all together, bringing it to a bit of a boil here, which we are just about at, and then I'm gonna bring it down to simmer and leave it here for about 20, 25 minutes. So we just finished cooking it, and so now we've poured it into our Vitamix. And now we are going to blend it until it's smooth. So now we've added the blended mixture back into the pan and we've added in the paneer with all of the marinade. So now we're gonna mix this in and then we're gonna let this cook for about 10, 15 minutes. So now everything has mixed together and cooked down. So now it's time to add in the final ingredients. So we're going to be adding one and a half cups of coconut cream and I'm using the brand May Ploy. So I'm just gonna use a one cup and then fill it up halfway for the and a half. I'm going to be adding three tablespoons of ground almonds. We ground up a bunch of almonds and just put it in this bag. So I'm just gonna pull from here, one, two, and three. And then our final ingredient of the whole night, I'm adding tomato paste. I'm using the brand Centro or Cento, but honestly I use a different brand every time, just kind of whatever I find on an end cap. So um, I add slightly less than a tablespoon. So somewhere around uh, three fourths of a tablespoon, but I just use the regular tablespoon. It's not that serious. We like a heavier amount. So the ingredients that I've told you guys in the quantities, these are combination of a number of different recipes and just taking what we liked from different ones. Now this is all brought together. So I am going to probably just leave this on simmer while we get out the rest of the ingredients and get the naan all warmed up. Other than that, this is done. I did wanna bring you guys in real quick so you can see how much paneer is in here. They suggested about three pounds in a lot of the recipes and we used 28 ounces. But still in every single spoonful, you are getting a good amount of paneer in there. So we find the 28 ounces to be sufficient. So we just finished serving, served it with some rice, a little bit of cilantro on top, and then this is some yogurt. We use the Gopi brand Indian style low fat yogurt, 
and then we have some coriander chutney and then we both have our naans in here, just keeping them warm and boil. So we're just going to enjoy dinner, watch a show and have a fun little night in. So thank you guys again so much for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget, subscribe below, give me a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Talk to me.